What an absolutely marvellous car this is. This is Lord Beaverbrook's Rolls-Royce Phantom 6, a true luxury leviathan. I love to drive it, but today I'm driving something a bit more humble. I'm going to drive an Austin 7. In 1922, Herbert Austin launched this baby onto the British market. It was custom made for impoverished... It's not that one, Steve. Yours is over there. Oh. Oh, all right. There you are, Steve. That's what you want. Thanks, Chris. But it's a Mini. Ever been had? Oh, well, there you are. It's the car of the week. I'll give it a try. OK, so it's a Mini, a 40-year-old example of a car still in production today. And this one is an Austin 7 Mini. The reason it was called Austin 7 was because it was felt it embodied many of the virtues of the 1922 original. It was cheap, it was affordable by a whole new class of people, brought motoring to the sort of people who before had a motorcycle or had to rely on the bus. But the thing that really made this car a tour de force was its technical great leap forward. It was a transverse front wheel drive engine, the very first car in the world to have it. It also has hydroelastic suspension developed by Alec Moulton. There's enormous amounts of space in a very small car. It was a packaging revolution and it won the hearts of everyone that drove it. It's always said that Austin Myers never made any money out of the Mini, literally a few pounds per unit. In fact, I think Ford claimed they were losing 30 pounds on each car. But nevertheless, it was the popular car for any young man to take his girlfriend out in. Now, when the Mini was first conceived, it was aimed primarily at a market of people who'd never afforded a car before. But very rapidly, it found itself being bought by a rather more aristocratic sort of buyer. Thank you, James. You're welcome, sir. And one such aristocrat was a young Lord Montague of Bewley. I had one myself, in, this, is an, this, is, this, this is a 1959 model, this is the year it came out. And I remember that very well because I just got married and I remember seeing it just before I left England to go to South Africa and I couldn't wait to get back and buy one, which I did. After a slow start, sales of the Mini grew rapidly and the car became symbolic of the swinging 60s. So successful has the car been that the Metro that was designed to replace it has come and gone, and only now, 40 years after its launch, are we about to see what we are told is the Mini's replacement. Even this, however, does little more than pay homage to the Isagonis original, and is unlikely to be judged as important a car to the history of motoring as this, the Mini Masterpiece. <laughs> 